Okay, guys, I just found this story uh, a little off. I thought you guys would enjoy it. Um, uh, says teenager admits a terrible secret uh, to his parents and receives startling punishment. We all do stupid things as teenagers. We take risks that we ought not to take and talk back when we shouldn't. We'll find excuses to skip class or steal someone's beer out of the fridge on Friday night, but most of these small, rebellious acts are harmless. This is a story about a young man whose folly was far from harmless and who received a punishment from his parents that only can be described as overkill. Okay, so this should be interesting. Um... I was going through stories, and I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to report this one for you guys. Uh, this little, this boy's name, I don't know if he's a little boy, he's 15. Jamar was the type of person who was always smiling, even at a mere 15 years old. Everyone could see that his already gregarious personality meant he was going places. Sure, he passed his courses with a few B's and C's. But there were A's too. He was by all accounts a nice, friendly young man. A secret that he was keeping. Which is what the story is all about. Yet as nice and quiet as he seemed to everyone else, Jamar was already holding on to a rather devastating secret. One that once revealed would change the way everyone saw him, especially his parents. He lived with his mother, Lizette, his father, Jamar Sr., and his three-year-old sister in Highland Park, Michigan. Life was good until his mother began to notice him acting strange. A mother knows. Well, we usually do. Lizette had noticed that her son was acting stranger than usual. He seemed to be avoiding eye contact, and his ready smile had faltered pretty quickly. Finally, after little prodding, Jamar came forward to tell his mother that he had done something awful, something he knew was very wrong, something very inappropriate. Okay... This should be interesting. A 15-year-old had admitted to his mother that he engaged in what would be considered inappropriate contact with his three-year-old half-sister. Lizette was beside herself. This wasn't a bad grade or skipping class. This was getting caught or getting caught drinking or even shoplifting. She was going to have to call the boy's father. Okay. Jamar Sr. had worked as a letter carrier for the United States Postal Service for years. He was working that day when Lizette called him with the news that he had to come by and deal with Jamal. Why she couldn't deal with him um, is beside the fact. Mothers, mothers really seriously in this day and age, um, this is not the 50s, you know, you can... Um, handle your sons and your daughters you do not need a man to come into the house to take care of business you should be able to deal with your children on your own when the father is not home etc etc you do not need a man okay to do the dirty work you can be a dis a disciplinary as well okay um he was working when Lizette called him. She told him that he... She called him to tell him that uh, his son had done something horrible and made it very clear that no matter what, this wasn't something they could just sweep under the rug. Jamar Sr. came into the house fully expecting to have punished his son for breaking the law in some way. It was the only thing he could think of that Jamar could have done to warrant his mother's call. Never in his wildest dreams could he have thought that he would have molested his sister. Okay. Yes, who would, who would think that 
you know, out of all things that, you know, he would have done that. After an hour and a half of questioning from both Lizette and Jamar Sr., Jamar finally came clean. He told them that he had gotten up from the couch and gone into the little girl's bedroom. He pulled his shorts and underwear off and got on top of her. Before he could fully finish, though, his father lost control. Okay. Jamar P Pinky or Pinkney senior pulled out his gun and began pistol whipping his son in the living room Lizette jumped up she expected him to hit the boy beat him even but she certainly didn't expect a firearm to be brought into the equation before she could protest Jamar picked up his son and began to drag him outside okay Lizette and another female relative tried to stop Jamar from taking his son outside but to no avail Pinkney turned the weapon on them and told them not to interfere. Then he marched his son out of the house toward the vacant lot nearby. He was going to teach Jamal a lesson he'd never, he'd soon not forget. In a strange twist, Pinkney then had the prone crying teen strip his clothes off and kneel in the very public vacant lot. Faced with an irate father and a gun at his face, Jamal did as he was told, he pleaded with his father to stop despairing, but Pigney was unmoved by either his son's pleas or those of his terrified mother. The 15-year-old boy begged his father to stop. No, daddy, no, screamed Jamar, but he was no stopping. There was no stopping him What from what he began to do. The 37-year-old father looked down the barrel of the gun and no longer saw his child, so he fired the gun once directly into his son's head. Uh, Jamal Pickney Jr. fell dead to the floor. His own father had killed him with a single bullet. Okay. After that, the world blurried for everyone involved. Lynette ran to her son and was inconsolable. Meanwhile, her, his father turned himself into authorities. Murdering his son in revenge had been his first and only criminal act on record. After that, the trial shot into high gear despite knowing what he had done. People still wanted justice for Jamal. Um, wow. Uh, you know, now I, I don't really even know what to say, uh, about this. Um, like the kid came clean. The kid obviously had an issue. Um, do I think this could have been handled differently? Yes, I think he could have been brought for counseling. I think he needed counseling. I think there was a reason why he did that, a reason why he molested his sister. Um, perhaps he was molested. Um, we don't know really what, what caused him to do that. And I think that his father should have s seeked help for his son. Um, before killing him. I mean, that's just something that could have been done uh, to avoid the murder of a 15-year-old. Um, Jamar community came together to mourn the happy, quiet young man whose friends called him Teddy Bear. Volunteers from his high, high school came forward to talk about what a great kid he was. It seemed that regardless of his transgressions, they w could forgive him in a way that his father simply couldn't, okay? Um, in the meantime, the father sat in jail. He had been charged of first-degree murder and three counts of uh, felonious assault. If a judge convicted him the crime, he could spend the rest of his life in prison. As expected, he entered a plea of not guilty, but as his lawyer would come to explain, the case was more complicated than anyone initially believed. His lawyer, Corbett O'Meara, described the case as far from straightforward. He explained that his client was in shock from what he had, what had happened and he was in mourning as the trial began. He went on to say that the father had never been diagnosed with mental health issues. There was likely something wrong internally for him to go to the lens that he did. Um, his position was that something other than most aggressive punishment had been considered 
in the trial, though, it was a pity that the father didn't think the same thing while administrating a fatal punishment to his son, regardless of the lawyer's fairly uh, uh, fair position. The prosecutors were not buying it. Okay, and I probably wouldn't either because I seriously think counseling and having him, his son, seek help and trying to help his son through that would have been a better uh, way of handling it. Prosecutor Kim Worthy came out with guns blazing when the trial began, stating no individual has the right to exact the death penalty on another nor ma no matter how reprehensible their behavior. That is why we have laws. They seem to be good news, at least for the father who himself might not have been on the chopping block if it was not for the prosecutor's position. Okay. Uh, oh, I think if I was a prosecutor, I probably would feel the same way. Only because, like I said, I really think counseling and finding the uh, source of why he did that would have been a fairer uh, way to deal with this. Um, as the father fought for his freedom, those who knew Jamar Jr. mourned his loss, his principal at Martin Luther King High School. Deborah Jenkins explained that the young man was well-liked and polite. She added that the school com uh, community had been shaken badly by his death, yet none were more shaken than his mother, Lizette Cherry. Um, yeah, I would think she would be uh, in shock and think that the father was going to deal with that a little bit differently. I think I would have thought the same thing. Uh, the father was awaiting his verdict when Lizette was... In invited to rise and make a an, an victim impact statement to the judge. I will never hear his voice again. I will never see his smile. He took that away from me when he put matters into his own hands. He was the judge, the jury, and the executioner. Your Honor, I ask you, he needs to spend the rest of his life in jail. Damn. Okay. Well. She called him to handle this situation, and that's the way he handled it, and now she wants him in jail for the rest of his life. Um, her request was ultimately granted. The father was sentenced to 37 to 80 years in prison for cruel execution-style murder of his son. He would have the rest of his life to think about what his anger had cost him. Unfortunately, there's no happy ending here. Only a grim semi-satisfaction that justice was done. Was it done? I don't know. This case is something that I have to tell you um, is definitely uh, different than anything else I think we've heard. Uh, you know, um, before. So I really wanted to bring this to you guys, uh, and see what you thought, um, about this. Um, we can have a discussion about it once you guys listen to it. And, uh, I'm, I'm eager to see what you guys think about this. Um, if you think this was, uh, uh, a, a fair punishment or, overkill as they as they're describing it um let me know let me know you guys in the comments i'm a little shocked uh, i think i'm a little in shock by the uh the story and just the overall handle of it um <laughs> leave your comments below let me know what you think um hope you